everyone, 3D Hero here, and welcome back to another Destiny 2 build that I have shown. Today, we're going to be focusing our attention to the new Promethean Spell Boots for the Warlock, with a build that will improve on this usage a lot more. As from my understanding, a lot of you aren't giving it a chance or credit where it's best due. Now, this build here will focus on allowing us to create more supers on a regular and passive nature, which will feed into the boots main exotic ability, and allow us to create multiple amounts of rifts wherever we use our super to. At the same time, with bottom tree a ton of flames, we can extend our super for longer, as long as we net kills of it and rinse and repeat. Basically, in short, high intelligence plus Promethean Spurs exotic ability, plus a ton of flames, equals a minefield of rifts and galore. Tasty. If you've been stuck on trying to make this exotic work, then maybe this touch of goodness can help you out with a few tips and tricks here and there. So for the subclass of today, we will be picking the Atonement of Flame subclass, which has some unique perks that fit right at home with Promethean Spur. In this tree, the only perk we will be making use of is a Fated for the Flames, Everlasting Fire, and Igniting Touch. With Fated for the Flames, this will come in handy for us once we're in the super, as with fiery streaks of flames being produced the moment it hits the ground, it means we can nab multiple targets at once, which will then produce more rifts upon deaths, and thus allow us to produce a vast number of rifts wherever we go, and wherever we generally hit. Next we then have Everlasting Fire, which extends our super upon kills, which overall is a just generally amazing perk. If you're going to be using this in PvP for example, as you can pretty much use this to wipe out a whole team easily, if you can catch them off guard. Now in PvE this makes it even more better and fitting for our build, as the more kills we get, the more longer we can stay in the air, for which overall means more rifts can be produced, and so forth. So for the exalted piece, it seems like a fitting area for anyone who doesn't know how to build around it, should know where to start in general. And lastly we have Ignite and Touch, which burns and detonates our targets, which sounds pretty average for this build, but combine this with Enhanced Impact Induction or just Impact Induction, and we can get some juicy grenade energy back. Why this is important is because if you have the Ashes to Assets perk available, which provides this super energy upon grenade kills, we can create a Wombo Combo setup that will always feed into itself, and allow us to get our super energy back within only a few seconds. These are what generally will make the subclass quite fitting for the exotic, as it works incredibly well with a ton of flames, and feeds into the ability of having a super play a much bigger role when active. The other two subclasses in the tree can't provide that same effectiveness that the bottom tree does, and even if you try to, well, good luck. But stick with bottom tree for now, until Bungie makes some changes on the boots in the near future. For the weapons, you're going to want to have masterwork weapons in both your heavy and secondary slot, so you produce orbs upon kills for yourself and for your allies. When picking your secondary, make sure you have a super energy mod attached with your gear, as that will generally make the build much more stronger. For example, if you have a fusion rifle, then make sure you have the light reactor mod attached to your gear, simple, as you can get bonus super energy upon kills. The same for if you have a shotgun or grenade launcher. These, while also massive work, will help you massively in terms of producing orbs and getting super energy on the fly, produce your super easily. It's a win win when you look at it. For your primary, we will be using the Bad Juju, which is for the exotic perk String of Curses, which provides a damage buff for each kill up to 5, auto reloads our weapons upon kills, and also gives us super energy back upon each kill made, and how strong our Strings of Curses is. It sounds great on paper, and honestly it's an amazing little weapon to use for all activities and for any build users out there that wish to create a super build from scratch. If that is the case, then this weapon here is one thing you want to focus on the most. This here, combined with our Promethean Spurs, will allow us to endlessly have supers in near minutes of play, and it just works. I'm kind of lost for words here, as now the Promethean Spur, although limited in certain content, can still play within its strengths, and basically makes you an Rift Master of the air, wherever you go. Now, if you're new and you don't have the bad juju, then please don't fret, as like I mentioned earlier, having a masterwork weapon as its replacement will do the same thing, to a degree. You just won't get bonus super energy upon kills like the String of Curses, and your masterwork weapons. I would also recommend having a AR, or a full auto scout rifle for the mass work to fill the spot in as well, as they have faster fire rate, large magazines in reserve, and generally can kill really quickly, and also have decently good reload speeds. For the stats, we come with a very high intelligence stat of 74, so we can have around a 4 minute passive cooldown, 
with our resilience, recovery and grenades being around the 40 to mid 40s to ideally 50ish mark. Now here's where I've come across the issue with the intelligence stat. Although it's relatively high, it doesn't feel like it provides that much of a passive regeneration over time compared to something like focused in discipline or recovery or mobility. And even though I have the necessary armor perks and bad juju to help boost the performance of the build, it feels like it's still not enough unless I push it all the way to 100, which may be an overkill for some people. Now hear me out, it still performs great and to the way I expect it to be. And to be honest, 4 minutes for the intelligence regeneration is actually quite good when you think about how many enemies you're going to be killing anyway, and back and forth and back and forth. Plus, I am a bit of a hypocrite, as you may have noticed. Although I said it was an issue, it really isn't a big of an issue for us to fret over. Like I said, with everything going on around us, this stat may seem low, but the results are very high. If you feel like this stat is too high, then refocus your attention to grenade regeneration for example, as we can make use of our ashes to assets perk if you have that, or we can bump up recovery and resilience stat to mid 50 so we can survive more outcomes instead. Generally what I'm trying to say is play around with the stat here and see first first hand how it feels to you. If you want to go fully max then by all means go ahead, but if you feel like going all the way max or you think like this stat here is too strong, then reduce it down a bit and then move your stats to other areas improve it and make the build a bit more flexible for your gameplay. Now, for the armor, we will need of course the Promethean Spurs of the Boots, which will allow us to produce both healing and power risk upon super kills. You'll also need a solar affinity bond, so you can attach the Ashes to Asset mod or the Relative Weapon Super mod. But also remember, please, Ashes to Asset is only available on solar bonds, so if this is a problem, alternatively, you can have a Void Bond or generally a solar bond in general, and make use of the new Solar Plexus mod, which provides a super energy upon finishers, so in many ways, you won't be left out. But anyways, for the mod, we have the following. Head, Recovery and Special Ammo Finder mod. Arm, Discipline and Enhanced Impact Induction mod. Chest, Intelligence mod. Leg, Intelligence mod. Bond, Enhanced Ashes to Assets and Light Reactor mods. Now, with that done, what can we do here with the build? Well for starters, with the build in check, we can use this build to A. Create endless amounts of orbs for ourselves and for our allies B. Use these orbs created in our weapons to gain super energy back quickly And C. Pop off our super like a crazy viking we are and create pools upon pools of power rifts and healing rifts so that us and our allies can make full use of them And then, repeat it all again because that's how much of an addict you'll become after having your first taste I will admit when I first tried the boots out from a world drop, it didn't feel that appealing at all, even though it has a cool looking design towards it when active, but once you find a specific activity for it where it works best in, then you come to realise how helpful it can truly be. Looking into the exotic as a whole, it's extremely limited to what they use and where they use it and for what content, as the idea of producing power and healing risk as you use your super is great on paper as you can create an empowering minefield for your allies to take cover in, which will overall benefit everyone, especially on content where groups of players will need to huddle together for a DPS phase. But the problem with that is not many people see it as an overall useful exotic, as like I said earlier, it's very limited in terms of where you can use it and benefit from it the most. Let's take a look at public events, Reckoning, Menagerie, Sundial and Gambit. These PvE contents will fit the build as it's designed, as we'll have waves upon waves of enemies coming up against you, which will benefit you for building your super. But also, these contents will tend to have 6 to 3 man activities, where you can make your super hits for rifts easily, and be aimed at a specific spot for your allies to be moving towards, to which nonetheless will always be used as a free support and bust for everyone. And this is where I see the build will be used for in the most, tight and close quarters fights, while you're playing in large teams and supporting each other. With this build in mind, you can become a full-time support player for your team by producing orbs and rifts at your pleasure. And honestly, who would complain about such a great perk? Or an overall great build in general? You then also have to remember, with Bottom Tree active, and Everlasting Fire active as well, you can stay in your super for a very long time as long as you get kills, which will feed back into you producing rifts and hey, it all works out. 
Unfortunately, not many people will see this exotic as a case, as there's honestly just better exotics out there that can provide overall better functionality, like some braces or Nezrak Sin. You also have to remember that using this build in Nightfalls, Raids or even PvP will probably be a big no-go for some, because of how strict certain content in gear will be, unless you're playing with a group of players who are happy for you to play with it. And in Raids or Nightfalls, it can be extremely helpful when stuck in certain situations, or if you have teammates that's not quite the best for surviving. I have a feeling all the down talks and negativity around this exotic is simply because it takes players outside of their comfort zone, and aren't looking at the bigger picture where for once, we can have an exotic that is specifically good for certain contents, and with the right build in mind can make it even stronger. Not all exotics need to be OP or great for all contents, but I still agree with some people when I say how underwhelming an exotic can just be, it's just you need to think outside the box, and sometimes it works with what you got. Nonetheless, the build I've created does the job, and all the perks, stats and extra abilities tied in will make full use that the build will benefit the user. Now, use this build in the recommended PvE contents I mentioned earlier, as that's where the build will be at its most glorious in. But if you feel underwhelmed, or that the build doesn't hit the right criteria or the right notes that you're searching for, then by all means, please experiment with it, until you get something more applicable for you. Now, go out there and have some crazy walk of fun, and maybe, just maybe, someone on your team will thank you for your support, and your dazzling boots. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, the link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys in the next one.